Alright, so in this video we're going to show you how to gear a servo drop from one servo to another servo. Now in this case I do not have a motor cable. Um, I do have it on order, but it has not got here yet, so I do have the feedback cable. So what I'm going to do is actually, and I have this on axis 2, so axis 2 right here, and you can see that right there, axis 2, you can see that. Now I do have this actually configured in my system. And let me show you how I have it configured real quick. So we're going to pull up trainer servo axis two, and there's a special way you have to have this set up. So just so it would work. Okay. So I have this in the general tab set up as a feedback only and the motor tab right here. I have this as feedback only. Okay. Now in the trainer servo, which is the servo right here, right? this servo right here um, basically I have that set up in the general tab as a servo control and it is a position loop or posi uh, position servo so what we're going to do is gear these two together so that they work together all right so very the very first thing you need to do is go into motion axis commands now, I'm not going to write any code behind this because I just want you to see you know how this would work if I turn this if I just turn this shaft right now you see there's no movement. I have no movement on the servo, right? If I turn it, no movement. Now, however, when I gear them together, they will. Now first, I want you to note something. Um, this servo right here, when turned off, right? If you're using motion access to right commands and you try to gear something, let's just try to gear the, right here, you just go down to motion move and you go to gear and the slave servo would be the trainer servo the and we want to gear it from the position of the actual uh, trainer servo 2 which is the feedback loop right here this is the second one um, what we're doing is if we try to execute this it's going to say uh, the the command try to execute the axis loop is not closed what that means is the servo that we're trying to gear to or to use in the gear is not turned on. So let's turn it on and then let's go back to our gear um, gearing section right here. So we have trainer, which is the actual servo, this servo right here. Then we have the uh, master axis, which is going to be this feedback loop, right? Just the feedback loop. I'm just going to turn this the shaft, right? And then we're going to go ahead and execute that. Okay, so that has no problem. Now you see, none of these are running. Now if I if I actually run this, if I turn this a little bit, you can see this the other servo turns now. And so how however fast I turn this, you can see that servo will run. And that's because I have them geared together, right? So I'm using this as a feedback loop and I'm gearing this these two together. Right, so basically I'm turning the shaft. And if I don't turn the shaft, there is zero movement on this servo. Right, but if I just turn the shaft a little bit, it turns. If I do the other direction, it turns that direction. So this is linked together, right? So these two are working. So now, if we wanted to, now the, doing motion access direct commands, in my opinion, um, are a really, really, really solid tool to actually troubleshoot or see how functions work, how your system's going to respond. Um, I do those a lot in like system commissioning and stuff like that, just to, to make sure that what I've written in the, the logic works and works as it should work, right? Um, and that's how you get proper order of operation when you're writing your code. Now that we have that, we can actually write code for that. Um, but until this, right, it's real simple. Turn that and I have that working. Now, how do I shut off the gear? I can go to my motion access direct commands and hit stop. Stop all would stop all. So now if I turn it, you see I'm turning it. I get no movement up here because this is stopped. Now, if I come back in here and do a gear and gear these back together, just like this, then I get movement again. So the stop command from the motion axis moves, as long as you have a stop all, right? You can choose stop gear if you want to. If you stop all, 
it's just going to stop all then you're going to have no more movement so you see that is a, a, a really good way to, to have a position loop um, or to actually have a feedback loop only and use that as a as if it was an encoder right because i do have this scaled properly to work as an encoder for a zero to uh, 360 scenario um, i do have that scaled as a rotary and it does roll over as a zero to 360 so just keep that in mind um, that's one alternative right and eventually my uh, stuff will come in from i ordered an encoder so that i can use that as well so that we can actually start seeing like real world scenarios. But until then, you kind of understand the way one servo, one servo can be a feedback loop only and then control another servo controller. And again, this can be done in a Kinetic 6000, Kinetic uh, 5500, Kinetic 5700, uh, MPL motor, which is right here. These are two M MPL motors and uh, you can use these as VPLs as well. So just keep that in mind, I am running version uh, Studio 5000 version 34, but that does not actually hinder you from running any version, version 20 all the way up to 35, right? You can still do this exact same setup. So hopefully that helped you understand um, gearing and helped you understand how to do that through a motion direct command. Um, some things to look out for, you know, as far as like when you get warnings, the that's why you kind of understand the order of operation and how the order of operation is actually highly important when you're controlling a servo. So just keep that in mind. And notice, all this stuff is setting in a controlled manner, right? This is setting in a controlled manner. I'm not commanding this servo at, that I'm touching. I'm not commanding that. And for this matter, I have full control over this servo. So do not do this on a live machine. Do not do this where it, there could be any potential danger or anything like that. I am in a very, very controlled manner. I set all this up, stuff up personally at my house, and I want to make sure that you understand. Um, you can do the same thing, but just make sure that safety first, okay? When you're dealing with any kind of motion, safety first. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video, and we'll see you guys on the next one.